Welcome to Bridge to the Atlantic, where we get to know the people behind the creative industries. We're your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber Smith, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. And I'm singer songwriter and multi instrumentalist Marcin Avelli. We're excited to tell you about our new shirts available right here. We have them in seven different colors um, Bridge to the Atlantic with our fun little logo on it. Uh, the cool thing is, if you're listening to this right now, if you're tuning into this, watching this, whatever you're doing, uh, we have a cool coupon code. It's BTA Rocks, and you get 10% off your purchase. So get on it. Joining us this week is singer songwriter and LGBT activist Tom Goss out of Los Angeles, California. Tom's known for his inventive videos and his heartfelt songs, which aim higher and strike deeper. Tom's music has been featured on ABC, HBO, MTV's logo, and he can be heard on hundreds of radio stations across the U.S. We're excited to hear all about his experiences in the music industry and the advice he'd offer to his fellow musicians. Welcome to the show, Tom. <laughs> Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? I'm well. Yes, <laughs> also well. <laughs> yes, we, 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 we smile through, through the, the pain <laughs> of, uh, of technology and, uh, um, you know, all that fun stuff. But hey, uh, we're really glad to have you here. Um, and Marcio is going to jump in and, uh, and make things pretty awkward. I like making things awkward because I'm super awkward and Ross is um, equally or probably more awkward, depending on the situation. So, in different ways. <laughs> Tom, tell us three things about yourself that everyone should know. Um, well, I, I am, I guess, I guess it's interesting because I make a lot of really fun music videos. So if you want to get to know me, one of the, one of the great ways to get to know me is through my music videos, which are sometimes fun and sometimes really thought provoking. So it kind of depends on which music video um, you're popping into. Um, I live in Los Angeles, California with my husband. And we have several children, and by children I mean stuffed animals, um, because we <laughs> travel to, we travel far too much, and we couldn't actually take care of anything living, even a plant. Um, and I'm a Taurus, and I guess that speaks a lot about me because uh, because I'm very bullheaded, and and nose to the grindstone. I'm kind of like uh, a bull in a china shop. So, um, <laughs> that, those are, I think those are really, that's my sensitive side. My sensitive side is the music videos and the rest of me is kind of like, uh, um, you know, a bulldozer. Well, that I like that. I'm all about yeah. dichotomy and, uh, balancing out the yin and the yang. I'm a Pisces, <laughs> so it makes sense to fish swimming in opposite directions. <laughs> well, the funniest thing about that is I've never said that in my life. I'm like, where, where, like I said, well, I'm a tourist. I'm like, what does that mean? I've never, <laughs> I've never said that in my Bridge, life. Bridge so. the Atlantic does this to people. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It so does. Beware. And I'm curious to see um, if we're going to see some of your sensitive side and some of your bullheaded side throughout the interview. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. curious to see. Well, we'll see. How this goes. <laughs> cool. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was reading, I was reading about you um, today. Because I'm creepy and stalkerish, and you uh -huh. know, it's got nothing to do with the fact that I'm I, researching I you for the no, show. No, I can confirm this. <laughs> yeah, I know where you live, Marcio. Um, so, Tom, your your path to becoming a full time musician is really interesting. Because um, initially, you were training to be a priest, and then you moved to working with nonprofits. Um, where was it that music kind of came into? Like, what led you to music, and how do you balance that with all the other kind of nonprofit and activism kind of stuff that you do? Uh, well, I think it goes a little further back than that, in that I, I was in school um, to wrestle. I, I was a, I, I, I really loved wrestling, and I was very good at it, and so I went to, to college um, to wrestle, and so I, I did that for a long time, and if you know anything about wrestling, it's very intense. Um, <clears throat> and so when I graduated from college, I was doing this, you know, really intense thing in college, and then I moved to um Washington DC to, to train to become a Catholic priest and that in and of itself is a very intense thing just in a different way So it's doing all these like really all life-consuming things um, <clears throat> And seminary was 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 really bad place for me to be and so when I left all I really wanted to do was Something light and fun that I wanted to do, you know, and I had started playing the guitar when I graduated from high school um because I was obsessed with Dave Matthews band. And, and so I just was playing the guitar a lot. And for me, it was a real, 
I think honestly, this this speaks to 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 what we were talking about in the in the last piece is is the the music really spoke to to the troubles that I was having um, emotionally, um, and 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 the and the wrestling really spoke to kind of like my my physical manifestation of my aggression, and so you know as that kind of uh, played its way out of my life as you grow older. You, I guess for me, I, I was getting less and less angry. I was really dealing with the emotional side of things through, through the guitar. Um, and so it was becoming, writing was becoming more and more a part of, of my life and, and a thing that I was really, <clears throat> excuse me, a thing that I was really enjoying and finding value in. And then when I left seminary, I just wanted to make a record. I didn't really know much else besides that. So I got a job at Starbucks and made my first record, which was which was called Naked Without, um, released in 2006. And once I released my first record, I was still working at Starbucks and it was like, you know, that's not very fulfilling. So I started running um, a service center for the homeless and I did that for eight years. I did that a, actually a good portion of my career because in 2008, when I started going on the road full time, I negotiated uh, a salaried part time telecommuting position, which meant that I would write grants, take donations, deal with donors and do all that for the road. So in addition to all the booking and performing and and um, gear setting up and driving um, I was also writing grants and, and, and managing a, a nonprofit from afar. So that was, it was a lot. It was a lot. And, and in 2014, I left that job and, and have been doing only music. And, and I moved to Los Angeles, so a lot happened. You mentioned uh, a little bit about uh, your music videos and how that, that is such a huge part of yourself. I actually want to talk about that a little bit. Because I, 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 I do agree, your, your music videos are very interesting and thought-provoking, some of them. And uh, how important do you think that music videos are in today's industry, particularly when there's just a flood of music everywhere, good or bad? Um, and, you know, do you think that that's kind of the way that artists can grab people's attention still? Absolutely. I mean, I think that the most important, the most important thing one can do as an independent musician to get people to have be interested in your music because let's face it people aren't people aren't sharing you know itunes links on their facebook page that's not how people are are, are discovering music i mean i do think that 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 now and this is a very new trend in the past uh, couple months um there are more streams happening than there are video plays happening um right now they're 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 about equivalent but you know, people still aren't really sharing Spotify playlists. You know what I mean? Not in the way that you you share YouTube videos. So yeah, without a doubt, if you want to be making a, a, a living and building a career as an independent musician, then you need to be making videos. And and just to be frank, you need to be making videos that are good and interesting and are different because everybody's seen. You know, boy walks down the street, sees girl, girl kind of ah. Oh looks away you know what i mean like it's like we've seen that a million times so you really have to do something that's interesting and different and engages the audience on a deeper level so you mentioned anger where does that stem from i mean i'm not that angry right now (laughs) but i mean where did it stem from it stemmed from feeling really different and isolated i think that's where probably comes from from a lot of people i know my parents had a really nasty divorce and i mean they still don't talk to each other it was 20 years ago over 20 years ago and i think they were they were kind of like we were kind of the tools to get back at each other in a lot of ways and so i think that was rough and i i just felt really isolated like you know like nobody really loved me and bad things were happening to me so i, I felt like justified in doing bad things to other people also i was a teenager you know so i'm sure i had these crazy hormones just happening but i was fighting all the time and uh, um yeah i was just fighting all the time and so wrestling seemed like a really uh it, it, it was an outlet that worked for me right so um I'd be interested to find out, like, as a member of the LGBT community, have you experienced any challenges professionally that you've had to overcome? Um, 
And if so, would there be any advice that you could offer to someone that can maybe learn from your experience? I mean, I think yes and no. I think, I think, I think had I been trying to, if, if my goal was always to be like signed to a major label and tour with Britney Spears, you know, I think that would, that I would have seen more, more roadblocks. But since I've always been independent, I've always been doing my own thing. I don't, I mean, there's some places that won't book me. I'm not very cool. You know what I mean? I'm not hip. I'm just this, you know, gay dude being like earnest and romantic. I get it. So yeah, there's roadblocks in that way. But on the flip side, you know, it's, it's, I'm doing something that's different that not many people are doing. And therefore there's a whole community of people that are craving this content that then seek me out. So I don't think it's been, I don't think it's hurt me in my career. I think it's, I think for me, I've always, I'm always striving to be super authentic. And so when I connect with people, I connect with people in a really honest, authentic and deep way. And that's far more important than connecting with a lot more people in a superficial in a superficial way that that doesn't do much, you know, from my perspective. Yeah, no, I would totally agree with that. Absolutely. I've got a I've got a a question I'm really interested in. Um, How do you reconcile the, I guess, hypocrisies in your in, in the faith? Um, in most faiths and your sexual orientation. Um, I, I guess I, I'm referring a bit to a uh, son of a preacher. Sorry, is it son of a preacher or yeah. son of a preacher man? Son of a preacher man. Right. I'm um, referring to son of a preacher man. Um, great video, by the way. Thank you. Is that, is that something that, that you've struggled with? Well, I assume it is. Um, I'd just like to hear you speak a little bit on that. Well, I mean, I don't have to struggle with it because I don't consider myself a Christian. Um, so I, I like what I came I came out when I was in Catholic seminary. Like that's when I realized, you know, I fell in love with somebody. And for me, it was like if for me, it's a no brainer. You know, I love this person. I feel this way. If one assumes that God is all knowing, all powerful and all good, then God wouldn't have created me this way to then condemn me like because that's that's the main that's the main crux of of the christian belief in in the all-powerful being so so for me it was obvious for me right away that that there was no self-hatred that was going to happen as a result of of me being in love with a man um but i honestly i don't know how people justify it i i struggle with that and and i guess for me when i was in seminary there were so many things that i that i didn't that I didn't agree with in the Catholic Church, but there were so many things about the Catholic Church that I loved, and and so for me it was really um, about changing something from the inside. Um, and once I got inside and realized how fucked up it was, I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, everybody just needs to stop giving them their money, <laughs> you know. So that's kind of exactly that's kind of how I feel about it at this point in time. You know, as you just start, I guess, opening your eyes to the hypocrisies and um, the, I mean, you, you can't, simply can't, I, <laughs> I've known gay people that still stay religious and I'm just very, very confused by it. Um, I, I can't stand by my beliefs as just a human, you know, uh, that cares about people and still yeah. believe in most religions. That's the thing about religion and faith is it's not, I mean... It's not rational. You not know, you have, you have this thing inside of you that believes a certain way and you feel strongly about that. And there's not, necess- there's not anything wrong with that. It's just that not everybody has that. So, I mean, I feel the same. I, I, I have a real hard time with that juxtaposition as well. And even like a week ago, I got picked up by this, this guy who, who booked me. And we're in the car and he's talking about, you know, his, his church. And like, I'm immediately like challenging everything he believes. And I don't mean to be like, and I'm I'm like in the middle of this conversation thinking to myself like, oh, this is the guy that's paying me. Why are you doing this, Tom? And I'm really just having, I'm I'm really a curious person. So I'm really just more curious than anything. But at the same time, I I do, I, I I don't 
understand it. But I guess I guess the question I always have is you do realize oh, I guess what I say to lot of many people is you real you realize if you lived in a completely different if you were born in a completely different part of the world you wouldn't even know of this religion. You know, you would you would be raised believing a completely different religion and you would just believe that it's so true and you'd be fighting for it too and saying, No, this is mm-hmm. right. But it's like it all it all really comes down to ninety ninety nine percent of the time where you're born and who you're born to, you know. Or, or if you you know, very small small percentage of people go find it themselves, which I I think I have a bit more respect for because it's not just like you're born into it, you actually find it yourself. You know. But I mean it's not that difficult to just be a good person and it's like I think a lot of people know that something isn't it, it, how do I how do I even say this? I know some people want to support certain things, but they can't because their religion says it's wrong. You know. Mm. And anyway, this has become a whole kind of other talk. It's a whole other show here. <laughs> you know, I, I try really hard to respect other people's beliefs, but I guess when those beliefs are infringing on other people's rights, that's where it really, really gets under my skin. Yeah, I, I don't care what anybody does as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. You know what I mean? And there, and there lies the problem, you know. But I think you sh- you should be able to shoot as much heroin as you want, as long as you're not hurting anybody else. But the fact of the matter is, is you're probably going to be hurting other people if you shoot heroin, right? So you right. probably shouldn't do that. Um. So I, you know, and it is it is funny, like the the. Your, the argument that you're saying that like just it's not hard to be a good people and and and, and it is interesting to, to the the idea that you don't have a moral compass without religion is always yeah. kind of interesting to me because there's so many non-religious people that are that are great people it's not hard to, it's not hard to be like don't rape people you know what I mean? okay it's not hard to figure what that else? What, what else? I, don't kill anyone I, yeah i don't think i can handle that one yeah yeah don't be an asshole i mean like it's goes yeah. down to that right well i mean like my, my oldest uh, a lot of people have a hard time with that yeah one, that's though, even that's, even me yeah. i'll admit <laughs> but i mean my, my oldest just started uh, uh just started uh junior kindergarten right and he obviously doesn't go to religious school he goes to public school and uh you know they learn all the same things just minus the religion they're learning to do it because it's the right thing not because yeah an eye in the sky is telling you that you should do it or else you're going to be burned in hell you know so i mean that's just my take on it i feel like there's more merit to it when you're just being a good person because it's kind of the golden rule pretty simple if you don't want someone to do that to you i mean it, it applies to yeah. up until you're an old 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 age person right i mean whether you're a little one or, or much older do you want to others as you would like done unto you it's <laughs> so simple all right tom are you ready for 20 questions yeah let's do it coffee or tea uh well i don't drink either but if i was it'd be tea and herbal tea do you have an alternative water yep water water works <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking water right now. Here we go. <laughs> Meat or veggies? Veggies. Wisconsin or California? Well, that's rude. Because that's my hometown versus the town that I live in. I know. It's bad to get a whole lot ruder, so <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> He's not lying. <laughs> I won't answer that question. Twitter or Facebook? Facebook. Baseball or football? Oh. Well, I'm a Chicago Bears, Chicago Cubs fan, and they fucking suck. I'm so sick of watching the Bears lose and Jay Cutler throwing these games away. And the Cubs are amazing this year. So right now, it's a fun ride for the Cubs. So, uh, And my, my family's obs- obsessed with, with baseball. But, but both. I love both. I prefer to play football. Um, actually, I prefer to watch football as well. But it's, it's, it's really heartbreaking these days. Talk to me in a month when the Cubs lose inexplicably in the playoffs. Okay, we'll insert it here. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) Exactly. We really won't. (laughs) Indy or major? Um, I don't know. Indy, I guess. I don't know. I think I think both both are cool. I mean, I listen to a lot of radio, so I love I love major label artists, but I love indie artists as well. I listen to a lot of Spotify, so I guess indie indie can be more interesting. Different. You have you have more freedom. Education or experience? Ooh, experience. Sia or Lady Gaga? Sia. That was like with that was like you didn't even have to think about that. Yeah, one. Easy. The oh, Simpsons or yeah. Family Guy? Ah, uh, Simpsons. I thought you were going to say The Simpsons or Seinfeld, and that shit was going to be hard. Talent or attitude? In reference to what? Just in general. Uh, yeah, like what's more important? Would like you prefer talent, someone? Yeah, if someone was attitude. really talented, or someone's just got the right attitude. Sorry, Ross, I kind of somebody that I'm, somebody that I'm meeting. 
Yeah, don't somebody that I want to hang out with. <laughs> well, it's like if I want to hang out with somebody, then attitude, obviously. If I'm sure. literally just standing at a show watching it, well, then talent. Fair enough. Studio or stage? Stage. Friends or Seinfeld? Oh, Seinfeld. I cannot watch Friends. Twerk or work? Oh, twerk. Yeah. Even though, I mean, I prefer twerking, but let's be honest, like, I, I usually am working. You twerk while you work? You're, you're an independent musician, so of course you're almost <laughs> always working. Do you want to hear something funny about twerking while I work? Yes, I really do. Yesterday I landed in Los Angeles and started texting my friend, like, hey, what are you doing? Because I wanted to see if somebody wanted to... I was trying to get somebody to watch the game with me, but all my friends are far too gay to even know that there was a game going on, right? <laughs> I love so, that. So I, I texted him, and I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, just twerking and working. And I was like, well, I don't believe you, right? He's like, no, I am. And then he sent, he sent me like a picture of him like singing. I'm like, well, I can't see your ass twerking. So then he got, and he works at a bank, right? He's like a banker. So then he got somebody to video him twerking while he was at his desk working. This was yesterday. He I must never be a heard fan of the show. Until yesterday. <laughs> yeah, he must be. And so I have a video now of my friend twerking and working. That's, that's a mood lifter. It is a mood It made me happy. You should turn that into a GIF. And then every time you're sad, you just like... <laughs> Have that one <laughs> You're right, I should. So Batman or Superman? I mean, I prefer the Batman movies, but I don't understand how they fight each other because obviously Superman is a superhuman person and Batman's just a dude in a suit. Like I don't even understand why we're talking about this. Like Superman doesn't even have to get close to him, he just laser eyes his face off. You know, it's like Superman would win in the fight if that's the question. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? Michael Jackson. Waffles or pancakes? Ooh, waffles, because, man, I'm from Wisconsin, and you can hold so much butter in those crevasses. Yeah. Celine Dion or Marilyn Manson? Oh, I, you know, honestly, I'm not familiar with either enough of their music to, to make that choice. Um, I'm heartbroken Celine... and Ross is heartbroken. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Celine Dion. Now, I, I at least could name one of one, a couple of her songs. You know what I mean? <laughs> now this one really seriously don't overthink this. The only reason this question exists is because these two words rhyme. Whale or kale? Oh, I'm much, I'm far more impressed by whales. They're amazing. Um, but I love kale and I eat kale all the time. So kale is more part of my day-to-day -day life. Bet Midler or the Riddler? Another rhyming one. We're, you know, we've been doing this for like a hundred episodes. That, that question has never left, has it? <laughs> How old are we? <laughs> really? um, we won't answer that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I this is going to make me, I feel like I've already lost my gay card. In this I was going to say, come on, what's going on, man? <laughs> I, I don't, don't live know, up to I, stereotypes. That's what I like. I don't know Never anything about Bette Midler. I know like nothing about her. <laughs> I know that she just has a new record, duets, right? And it's, it's all over Los Angeles. So I see her billboards all the time. So I know, and I know I'm supposed to like her, but, but the Riddler. Why are you supposed to like her, though, really? Why are you supposed to like her? Be Think about it. I don't know, because they have sex with men. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't Apparently make sense. it comes with the territory. Yeah, I've never yeah. really understood either. I, yeah, yeah, I'm supposed to love Lady Gaga and Bette Midler. I'm supposed to be... I'm supposed to love musicals. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, and you can't so like things. sports. I can't like sports. Somebody has decided this somewhere, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the universe decided all of these things, and... Uh, and then didn't inform me. So okay. it's, been, it's been a difficult yeah, I, life. I, I think I missed the invite to that briefing as well. <laughs> and I can't uh, like so any of those I, I things. Mean, I think, I, I think, I, I, think I came late to the briefing because I, I like half of it applies to me and half of it doesn't. So, right, right. Yeah, that's a bit late. <laughs> so your final have... question. <laughs> okay. The most important question mm -hmm. is going to be Ross or Marcio? Um, that's rude. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm not answering that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fine. I'll take that as a I win. Know. I usually lose. 
You don't usually lose. I always Mark, lose. I lose stop. everything. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, before we wrap up here, um, if you can yeah. go back in time and do anything differently in your career, what would it be? Just one quick thing. I would sleep with so many people. <laughs> it's again a whole different show now in a different direction. Yeah. You know, being at, being at the age I'm at now and having having done this for for many years and being a dad now that you can hear my son in the back. You know, you yeah. realize how much time I don't want to say wasted, but you know, it's not not going not just not having that gusto. And that doesn't mean you don't believe in it, but being afraid. Just being afraid. We're all taught to fear. That's the way we're all yeah. raised in in this world, especially in North America. We're we're taught to fear everything and to think that there's hierarchies and that these people are more important than you because they're more successful. It's like, no. Yeah. No, that's one thing this shows Tommy. It's like we're all they're all the same, man. You know, yeah. we're all the same and and you know, maybe you can weigh in a little bit more on that. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> and that's the thing and I think there's and I think there's so much smoke and mirrors too. You know, so so there's this idea of this person is more important than me. And I think there's there's two sides to that coin. coin. First of all, they're not because the, it's probably they're really much better at, at smoke and mirrors. And the second part of it is like, no, like self-deprecation is not helpful. Believing right. you are less than is not helpful. Like, I, I understand that, that being an artist comes the the. the the territory is that you have to like think you're horrible and everything you do is not good enough and all this kind of all this kind of like internal dialogue that's always happening in your head and what i the flip side of that which i think is more important is like none of that's true that's right like make what you make do the best that you can at the time and then put that in the world and you know what the world is better off for it because what you're making is valuable and just believe in the value of of your work and yourself and your voice and i think i think the people who do go at it with gusto have that peace they believe it sometimes whether or not it's true and that's and you know and all of that's a matter of opinion but i think that's really the, the key thing to hold on to 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 hone into is that it's really about uh, uh believing in your in your self-worth and your voice i love that man it's it's you know you were saying self it being self-deprecating i think having humility is important you know not being self-deprecating you know i think that that's where i think people need to flip the coin a little bit you know yeah. not not be so egotistical about it but not I mean, and, and it's so subjective, man. It's so yeah. subjective. Yeah. It really, really where, is. Where do you live? Um, the address? No, <laughs> I'm in the <laughs> Toronto area. Oh, okay. Toronto. I feel like, so I grew up in Wisconsin, and, and, and I, I, I see this all the time. I see this in me. I am like staunch Midwesterner. You know what I mean? Like the way that I see the world, the way that I view the world, and there's something so Midwestern about humility is the greatest asset to have like regardless of what you're doing you're not talking about it you know you're not you're not you, you don't have pride in it you do it you do it you get the job done and then you move on you know what i mean and i think so much about that is great but so much of it i feel like sometimes has held me back in my career because i'm like oh no i'm just making that it's no big no 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 oh i know same. you love it but same great. yeah 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 and you know, it's that word just makes yeah, all yeah, the yeah. difference. It's like, yeah. I'm just doing that yeah. compared to I'm doing that. Take that like, out. I'm doing that. Why do yeah. we do that? You know, why do we do this to ourselves? I don't know why we do that. You know this is our my, passion. This is our love. This is our life. We want to share it, this with people. And we're great. And the one thing that I do now that I've I honestly just started doing um, is listening to people who compliment me, who do it like hundreds of times every week i get these amazing emails these amazing notes these amazing compliments like from everywhere about how my music has helped them or how it's reached them or how it's done this or how they played it at the wedding or at the funeral or this and this and this and i used to this is how those used compliments used to go mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i didn't even hear them and but if somebody said like i don't like how you sang that song then i would be like Whew. They don't like how I say it. And just One like holding on to it. Yeah. And <laughs> so now, now I just tell myself and I make myself like save the messages now. Like, you know, and I'll probably go check my email right now. And there'll probably be one and I'll save it. And I'll, I'll read it and I'll take it in. I'll be like, yes, save it and move forward. And if you do that, it's so like the whole world is so much easier. I love it. I love everything that you stand for, man. And, uh, and, and you. your vibe and everything. 
And I really want people to, if they haven't heard of you and they're watching this, uh, where's the best place that they can find you online? Uh, well, you can find me on my website, which is TomGossMusic.com. And of course, YouTube slash TomGossMusic, Facebook slash TomGossMusic, Instagram slash TomGossMusic, Twitter slash TomGossMusic. You get, I mean, you get it. It's Tom Goss Music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. And you can find us, as in the, the show, on Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Just search Bridge the Atlantic and come and say hey. As for me, I'm working on my second solo album and you can be a part of it at marcianovelli.com slash pledge. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, all that crazy stuff, which is my name, Marcio Novelli. And I'm working on websites for various artists at the moment. You can check out my work at electrickiwi.co.uk. You'll find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and on Facebook, Electric Kiwi Design. This episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton, the rock star advocate, my son in the background, Buck Naked Soap Company, <laughs> 30 Roses, Wendy Donaldson, and Social Surge. All links are in the show notes, so please check them out because they truly keep this show alive and allow us to talk to amazing people like Tom. And if you want to be one of those awesome people, uh, just jump over to patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. Uh, you'll find all the details there. And uh, we love you. We do. And we love you, Tom. Thanks for coming on the show, man. It's just been a pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for watching Bridge the Atlantic. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss each week's episode. Please feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the show. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and subscribe to us on iTunes so that you can listen to us on the go. Thanks again for being awesome, and we'll see you on next week's episode. Oh,